The heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization refer to the change in enthalpy associated with converting a substance from solid to liquid, which we technically call fusion, and also converting a substance from liquid to gas, which we refer to as vaporization. Let's consider, for example, that we have some water in the solid phase, so this would be commonly referred to as ice, and we melt that ice from the solid state to the liquid state. There is a change in enthalpy, a delta H, associated with this process. As you know, it requires heat to melt something. So the change in enthalpy for this particular process is given the special subscript FUS because this change in enthalpy is referring to a fusion where we are converting a solid to a liquid. We pronounce this delta H fusion because it is, again, referring to the melting process. For water, the value of the change in enthalpy of fusion is a positive 40.79 kilojoules per mole. It's definitely not important that you memorize this number, but I just I have it on here because we're going to use it kind of as a reference point. Let's think a little bit about what this number represents. It's a positive number, which means it's endothermic. That means energy is being put into the system. And that's consistent with our understanding of the melting process. If we want to melt something, we have to heat it up. So we need a positive delta H. The units over here, kilojoules per mole, this specifically means that it takes 40.97 kilojoules for every one mole of water in the solid state. Um, the reason that I know that this is per one mole of water is because that's the stoichiometric coefficient for the balanced equation um, that is being described by this delta H of fusion. So one of the cool things about the delta H of fusion is that we can actually use it to help us understand the reaction that proceeds in the reverse direction. So I'm gonna use a different color here. What if we had some liquid water and we wanted to freeze it. So this is a freezing process. This is the opposite of the fusion process. Whenever we have a chemical equation that we have manipulated, like in this case, we have reversed the direction of the reaction. It is now proceeding in the reverse direction. We can make some pretty good assumptions about the value of the enthalpy change associated with the reverse process. We know from things that we've learned in the past that if we reverse the direction of a reaction, we also change the, the sign of the value of delta H. So for the freezing process, the value of delta H is negative 40.79 kilojoules per mole. Again, it's per one mole of water, but this time it's liquid water right here. Uh, what does this negative sign tell us? It, this tells us that it is an exothermic process. It is releasing heat. So when we convert a liquid to a solid, it releases heat. It's not a detectable thing. We don't feel water heat up as it is solidifying, but um, the data, the numbers tell us that that is how it works. Let's take a look at the vaporization process. So this is where we are converting water from the liquid state to the gas phase, H2O gas. We would call this, um, there's a lot of words that we would use to describe this in everyday language. We might call it evaporation. Uh, we might call it boiling. And this is where we're going from a liquid to a gas. Just like for the fusion process, we have a special subscript that we can put on this delta H. This one we would call um, the delta H of vaporization, VAP. And the value of this for water is 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Again, this is referring to one mole of liquid water. We could also use this to um, understand the change in enthalpy for the reverse process. So if we have a gas that is going to a liquid, the change in enthalpy for this process, and again, it doesn't get a special subscript, just regular change in enthalpy for this process, is just going to be opposite in sign. So this will be negative 601 kilojoules per mole, again, telling us that this is an endothermic process because we have a negative sign. Last but not least, um, which I did not include um, on this particular list, we could also describe a change in enthalpy for the sublimation process. So this is where we would be going from the solid state directly to the gas state. And we would call this a delta H sub because it is for sublimation. 
For water, it is positive 46.80 kilojoules per mole. And then of course we have a reverse one that we could write as well that would be negative 46.80 kilojoules per mole. Now, just kind of as a final thing for you to look at, if you are familiar with Hess's law, which is something that we um, have talked about in the past, take a note at the relationship between delta H of fusion and delta H of vaporization and the delta H of sublimation. Like if you could do math pretty quickly in your head, you could probably see that fusion plus vaporization is equal to sublimation. And if we take a look at our equations over here as well, if we were to add up this equation plus this equation, the liquids would cancel out, we would be left with H2O solid going to H2O gas, which is exactly this equation right here. So this is a beautiful kind of like side application of Hess's law in action. I um, just wanted to kind of call that to your attention. The last thing that I wanna mention on here, and this um, has to do with sort of the, the overall magnitude of delta H of fusion or vaporization. If you're trying to make some predictions about the value, if you have a substance that has very high intermolecular forces, that means that the molecules are being stuck together very tightly. This typically corresponds to a high delta H of vaporization, it takes more energy to pull them apart, and also a high delta H of fusion, and then also likewise would be a, a high delta H of sublimation as well.